Thank you for watching our Facebook Live today. My name is Megan and I'm one of the carnivore keepers here at the Houston Zoo. Today we are celebrating International Clouded Leopard Day here with our male clouded leopard, Tarak, and our female clouded leopard, Sun, who you might notice is a little bit higher up on the rocks. So my favorite thing to tell guests if they are looking for our clouded leopards is to look up. These cats love to spend time up high in the trees. They're very shy animals, and so they feel most secure up high where they can survey their territory and make sure that no one is encroaching on them. So you're seeing Tarak get some meatballs here. This is his diet that he receives every single day, and he's pretty excited about it. We're going to hear some different vocalizations from him. Tarak is a much more social cat than Suksun. Suksun kind of likes to keep her space, whereas Tarak loves to come up and hang out with keepers. He loves participating in training. And so what you're going to see him doing is some husbandry behaviors, which are kind of behaviors that help him participate in his own medical care. So what you just saw is a turnaround behavior. That helps us see different sides of his body that might be more difficult to see on a normal basis. It also helps us assess his movement. And speaking of movement, you're actually going to get to see a fitness session with Tarak. So just like you and I need exercise, so do our cats. And so what you're going to see Tarak doing is moving throughout the exhibit, working different muscles, using those claws and tail to climb and jump, and really just make sure that we're keeping his muscles and joints healthy, as well as his cardiovascular system nice and healthy as well. Tarak and Suksun are both nine years old, so they're still on the younger side, but we want to make sure that as they age, they are aging well, and that they're staying nice and healthy and able to move around this exhibit as they should. <laughs> Our clouded leopards are extremely agile animals. In the wild, you're going to see them jumping to and from trees. In fact, these guys can jump up 18 feet in one leap. So you're going to see he's got an extremely long tail. That tail helps them balance, and it can actually reach up to a third of their total body length. So you're going to see him moving from perch to perch, and you might that some of our perching out here is a little bit more stable, meaning it doesn't really move when he goes to and from it. But other perching is more dynamic. It's going to move with him. So that dynamic perching is going to help kind of interact with those different muscle groups, engage different parts of his body, and make sure that we're working every single area of his legs, his core, his paws, his tail. He's going to get a full workout out here. And that's going to help you see just how agile these guys can be in the wild. Like I said, these guys are excellent hunters. You can see that huge leap he does there, and he lands effortlessly. So something you might also notice is his teeth. That's a really cool aspect of clouded leopards. We kind of like to call them today's saber-toothed cat because they have the largest canine size to body size ratio of any of the cat species. So you can see those canines are very, very long. They can actually reach close to the same size as a tiger's canine. Even though these guys are much more of a medium sized cat, Tarak weighs in right at around 50 pounds, and that's full grown. Like I said, he's nine years old. Females typically weigh anywhere from 20 to 35 pounds. So we like to say these guys are kind of the medium-sized cat, the bridge between your smaller cats like ocelots and your larger cats like lions or tigers. And they're thought to be actually one of the most ancient cat species in the world, which is really cool that we get to be a part of hanging out with these guys. And through the AZA, or the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, we actually help participate in what's called the SSP, or the Species Survival Plan. And so with clouded leopards, that's a really awesome process because most of what we've learned about clouded leopards is from research done in the zoo setting, just like here at Houston. So one of the major things that we do with our clouded leopards is breeding. And so these two are a mating pair. They've been together since they were about one year old here at Houston. And so they will be together for the rest of their life. They kind of go through a cat marriage, per se. And so they are lifelong partners. Sometimes you can see them cuddling and spending time together. You'll oftentimes see Tarak grooming Suksun. He's a definitely a lover. But yeah, through that SSP,
USP, we've actually produced two successful litters of cu cubs. And so you might have come to the zoo and seen Luna and Nova. They actually just moved to another zoo up north to help other people learn about clouded leopards. And so now we get to focus back on the parents, Turok and Suksun. And we're just very excited to be able to showcase awesome animals to you guys here at the zoo. So Tracy asks, are they endangered and how we can help them in the wild? That's a great question. So these guys are not classified quite as endangered. They are listed as a vulnerable species, meaning that if their population continues to decline, they will become endangered. Now, like I said, these guys are very elusive in the wild. So sometimes it's really hard to do research and count the number of clouded leopards in the wild. And so, in fact, only about 10 clouded leopards have been collared in the wild. So like I mentioned before, it's really important for zoos like us to continue to build up that population in human care and really uh, make sure that we can help participate in conservation through that. Now you can see sometimes Turok maybe wants to take a break, as do we, when maybe we start exercising a lot, getting that heart rate up. All the training that we do with our cats is completely voluntary, so it's his choice to participate in this training. Sometimes he's really hungry and excited about those meatballs, and other times he just needs to take a breather. Dominic asked, what do they hunt in the wild? So these guys are smaller cats, so they're going to hunt smaller prey items like birds and rodents and rabbits. And sometimes they can even take down some of the smaller deer species and things like that. So again, you notice these beautiful markings on his face and on his side. They kind of look a little bit different than your typical spot or stripe. That's actually how clouded leopards get their name is for that spot pattern. It's said to look like a cloud. And so that's why leopards. Can they purr? That's a great question. These guys actually don't purr, which is pretty funny because most cats can either purr or roar, but these guys are kind of right in that gray zone. So you're going to hear a lot of different moaning vocalizations. These guys do hiss, they can howl, um, but they have a different type of bone structure that does not allow them to purr or roar like your big or small cat. You can also see he's got some awesome claws there. Those are really useful when he's climbing. He's got large paws give him surface area to grip onto those trees. And then that tail comes in handy to make sure that he can balance well. So just like we're trying to support their health and their fitness, we love to keep them exercising, keep them moving throughout the habitat through different maybe meat scatters or training like this. And it's a great time to talk about fitness and how fitness we love to support Team USA. We love to show off these guys' physical abilities just like we like to promote our country's physical abilities through the Olympics. So it's really impressive athletes out here. We love to show these guys off. In fact, they do have a couple of specific fitness behaviors that they have been trained. Rock here actually knows how to climb up and down trees to show off one of his really unique physical abilities. So he actually has flexible ankle joints and they allow him to climb down trees head first. So instead of your typical house cats that might have to shimmy down trees, he can actually do that head first. So I'm actually going to hopefully take a little bit of a breather and let you guys listen on those awesome vocalizations that you're hearing. And of course, just like any cat, he's going to choose this moment to be quietest. That's very typical of cats. They don't always do what you want. <laughs> so you can also see while he's vocalizing, you might notice he's rubbing his cheek on that mesh. So that's actually one of the ways that clouded leopards will scent mark the areas around them. So what he's saying is this is my territory, I'm ready for that food, and I'm going to put my smell everywhere so other cats know that this is my territory. So you're going to see them rubbing their cheeks on logs, on rocks, on different surfaces around their habitat to make sure that their territory is secure. 
So Tracy asks, how long do they live? These guys can live into their late teens or early 20s in human care. And in the wild, maybe about 10 to 12 years. So we have the ability to extend that lifespan because we have full-time vets on staff here at Houston Zoo, as well as they don't have to face any competition. So their biggest threat in the wild is actually deforestation. So you see they've got a lot of plants out here. They've got a lot of high perching as if they were in the trees in the wild. So they need those trees to make their home. So deforestation is definitely their largest threat in the wild. And so one of the ways that you can help these guys in the wild is just through paper recycling. Um, make sure those trees are staying alive in the wild by reducing and recycling that paper. As well as Houston supports conservation efforts to rebuild trees in the areas that these guys are native to. So we are replanting trees to help create more viable habitats for clouded leopards in the wild. So yeah, I mentioned a little bit earlier about their teeth. It's one of the really unique aspects of clouded leopards. You're gonna see he's got extremely large canines. These guys are kind of like the modern day saber tooth cats. Their canines are gonna be about the same size as tigers, giving them the largest canine size to body size ratio of any of the cat species. So obviously these guys are carnivores. They're gonna be able to use those teeth to shred their prey and take in all the meat that they can. So what you see Tarak drinking right now is actually a little bit of diluted goat's milk. So this is a special treat that he really enjoys. Um, we kind of compare it to ice cream for the cats. So he doesn't get this on a daily basis, but we can use it for training or special encounters. And we dilute it down to make sure that he's staying hydrated in the hot Houston summers. And we use goat's milk instead of cow's milk because it's actually easier for them to digest. They're a little bit lactose intolerant. Shelby asked, where can you find them in the wild? So these guys are native to Asia, um, typically Southeast Asia. So that kind of hot, humid jungle environment. So they actually do really well here in Houston. It's very similar to how they would live in the wild. So you see they have got all this brush. They're gonna be very kind of stocky and moving through plants and trees in the wild. Um, and so we love to give them that type of environment here at the zoo. I know Six Sun loves to kind of stalk through the bamboo and kind of sneak up on keepers sometimes. And that's exactly how they would hunt their prey in the wild. <laughs> so Tarak, I mentioned before, he's a little bit more of a social cat than Six Sun. Six Sun's choosing to kind of stay up there in her own space, whereas Tarak loves to come down and interact with keepers and guests. You'll sometimes hear him kind of talking up a storm out here, especially when keepers are present. He definitely associates keepers with food, and we all know that we love snacks. So as keepers, the best way to build a relationship with these cats is by free snacks. I love a good free snack, and so does Tarak. So when we first start working with these animals, that's one way that we can build up that trusting relationship that allows us to do these great husbandry behaviors, training that's necessary to their welfare is awesome here at the zoo. So not only do we have these great fitness behaviors, but we do have some awesome husbandry behaviors that help these guys participate in their own medical care. So Tarak here can receive voluntary injections, meaning that he can get vaccines while he's being fed um, completely voluntarily, as well as we can take voluntary blood samples from his tail in a protected setting. These guys, while he's a little bit on the smaller side for a large cat, extremely dangerous. Take one good look at those teeth and you'll understand why. So all of our training is what we call protected contact, meaning that we don't share any space with these cats. So there's always going to be a barrier between us and them. So where might you see the clouded leopards when he's not up front training? So I know if you take a look at Suk Sun, she blends in very well into that rock work. But trust me, if they're not down here at the front, they're probably up high on rock work or tables. They love to be able to sit up high and survey what's down on the ground, as well as that's just where they feel most comfortable. So you'll oftentimes see them napping at the top of the exhibit or maybe at this front table here. And oftentimes you're gonna see them napping if they're not training. Cats love to sleep. The phrase cat nap is very accurate. So oftentimes you'll see these guys sleeping while the zoo's open. 
saving up that energy, resting in the heat of the day, making sure that they're not overexerting their self. I, we all know that it gets really hot here in Houston during the summer, so we want to make sure that they're staying nice and cool and they get a pretty good breeze up from the roof as well. So you can really get a great view of how he uses that tail to help balance and move across that beam, making sure that he's staying steady. There's another great example of balance. He stuck that landing for sure, even on a pretty wobbly table. So again, while that table does move, that's gonna help engage different muscle groups and make sure that he's staying as fit as possible through these exercise sessions. And as you can see, he's really enjoying it. He's definitely participating, getting lots of yummy goodies. And that's exactly how our training program works. It's gonna be an ask and reward system. So we're gonna ask him to do these different behaviors. And if he does that behavior, he's gonna get a really positive reward. So Tarak here loves training for his meat diet and milk. But what's really cool about Tarak is although he is a carnivore, he actually loves eating corn. <laughs> so once a month we get enrichment um, from our commissary of produce, so different fruits and vegetables that our cats get to interact with. And Tarak here actually loves eating corn. He gets very excited and very possessive about it. Um, so he loves spending a good solid chunk of time just chowing down on that corn on the cob once a month. So again, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope that you can join us next Wednesday at 11 for another Facebook Live. So thank you so much for celebrating International Clouded Leopard Day with myself and Tarak.